Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. I'm going to have uh, Deacon Allett lead us in prayer this morning. Two. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are going live. Hallelujah. How many excited about Jesus today? Amen. We definitely want to give a shout out <coughs> to our pastor this morning. It's his birthday. We had a great celebration, uh, a, a, a birthday celebration yesterday. We surprised him. He wasn't expecting it. But he said he felt something was going on, but he didn't know what it was. So I tell you, God is so good. He's so amazing. Why don't you stand at your feet in the house of God? Come on, get a shout to the Lord. Those of you who are here in this place today, God is still here. His presence is still going to move in the atmosphere. I don't know about you, but I still expect God to do something great and extraordinary in this place today. Oh, come on. We celebrate the King of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Glorify you, Lord God. We glorify you. Amen. You can go ahead, Dick. First, I want to start off thanking and giving honor to God in my life to his son, Jesus, for passing and answering me. Pastor and his apostles, Kelly, and all the other apostles of faith, God. Want to start off. Lord, you've been good. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been good to me. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been good to me. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been good to me. Lord, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good to me. Father, I come to you as humble as I know how to say thank you. Thank you because you've been so good to us, Lord. When you woke us up this morning to see this beautiful day, we come to say thank you. We want to thank you for you sharing your blood on the cross 2,000 years ago, Lord. That's the reason why we're here this morning, because of your grace and your mercy. Father, because without you, Lord, we couldn't stand. It's you the reason why we stand, Lord. We know it ain't about us, but it's about you, Lord. That's the reason why we're here. That's the reason why they're watching online, Lord, because you love us so much. You love us so much, Lord, that you gave your only begotten son that you say in your word that you just believe. All we got to do is believe today, Lord. All we got to do is believe in you. Because you say in your word that you would never put no more on us to be able to bear, Lord. Lord, sometimes this journey will be a little hard along the way, Lord. Sometimes the devil is on the rampage. But, Father, you gave us the word. You gave us a way out, Lord. And I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you right now, Father. Father, I want to thank you because, Lord, it's been hard, Lord, but I'm here. We all here this morning to tell you thank you, Lord. To thank you because, Lord, you love us. To thank you, Lord, because you care. To thank us, Lord, because, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless this morning. Bless the one that's here and the one that's on their way, Lord. Lord, I ask you to cover the land under the blood of Jesus. Cover our neighborhood, Lord. Cover our city, our state, our nation, Lord. Lord, cover the nations that are calling on your name, Lord. Cover them under the blood of Jesus. I thank you. Father, bless all the leaders that make a decision over our lives, Lord. Let him make the right decision, Lord. Father, we come to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we get close to this day, which they call Christmas, the day that you was, that your son was born. We know it's about you, Lord, and not ourselves. 
We know it's about your love. It ain't about the gifts, Lord. We know it's all about you, and we thank you. Father, just sing your anointing this day. Bless everyone that's participating in this service this morning. Online and in his presence, Lord. Bless your word, Lord. Bless the praises, Lord. Lord, just cover right now, Lord. Just cover right now under the blood of Jesus. Under the blood of Jesus, Lord. Just cover right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You've been good, Lord. You've been good, Lord. I thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. the river of my worship flow to you. Lord, I pray in all I do. Let the river of my worship flow to you. Like trees Come to worship God. If you come to bless him, come on, help me sing. Flow to you. Flow to you. Let the river of my worship flow to you. Lord, I pray in all I do. Lord, I pray in all I do. Let the river of my words flow to you like streams in the they swell, they swell with the rain. Let the songs of my heart, let the songs of my heart rise to bless your name, rise to bless your name and flow to you. Flow to you. time flow to you flow to you flow to you let the rivers let the river of my worship flow to you Lord I pray in all I do Lord I pray in all I do let the river of my worship flow to you They swell, they, they swell, swell with the rain. Let the song, let the song of my heart rise to bless your name and flow to you, flow to you. Let my worship flow. Worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow to you. Come on, 
help me sing, let all my worship. Let all my worship, let all my praise flow to you, flow. scripture today. So everyone, if you will, please stand for the reading of the scripture. Mark 11, chapter verse 22 to 26. Hallelujah. Glory and Jesus to answering says unto them, have and faith Jesus in God. Jesus answering said unto them. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And Jesus said, I mean, and Jesus answering said unto them. And Jesus answering said unto them. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. But, but shall, shall believe. But shall believe that those things which he said. That those things which he said <clears throat> shall come to pass. Shall, shall come, come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. He shall he have shall whatsoever, whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you. Therefore I say unto you. What things soever ye desire. What things soever ye desire. When ye pray. When ye pray. Believe that ye receive them. Believe that ye receive them. And ye shall have them. Ye Ooh, shall hallelujah. have them. Thank you, Jesus. And, excuse me, and, and, and when ye stand praying. And when ye stand praying. praying forgive. forgive. Thank you, Jesus. If ye have ought against any. If ye have ought against any. That your Father also which is in heaven. That your Father also which is in heaven. May forgive your trespasses. May forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, but if ye do not forgive, neither will your father, neither will your father, 
which is in heaven. Which is in heaven. Forgive your trespasses. Forgive your, your trespasses. trespasses. And, oh. and the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord and I live my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you give.
many times when we find ourselves in a dilemma and things I just can't seem to figure out how to fix in my life. I can find myself bowing down before the Lord and telling God about all my troubles, about all my trials, the pain, the hurt, the discouraging moments, the disappointments, the persecution, how I'm coming up short, like I keep second and same, making the same mistakes. I can tell God all about it. And it's a guarantee when I worship him, God will show up in your situation. He'll cause everything to work out for your good. That's the love of God towards us, his people. He loves us unconditionally. But the problem comes in, I get complacent. I'm used to being stuck in the wilderness mentality. I can't see myself being set free. So when God is trying to compel me to worship him, it's a struggle. But today we rebuke the spirit of the enemy. He is not going to hinder God's people from worshiping him. He is not going to stop God's people from getting their breakthrough. He is not going to stop God's people from being healed today. He is not going to stop the move of God in this house today. Because we come expecting God to move in our situation. We're expecting God to do something great in this place. We're expecting God to bless somebody with an overflow today. We're expecting God. I don't know about you, but I need an overflow. I need God to move in my life like never before. That's why I don't mind worshiping him. I don't mind praising his name because I've seen him do too many things in my life to be quiet. When I was sick, he healed me. When I was bound in iniquity and sin, he set me free. And the same resurrection power that raised up Jesus from the dead is the same power that's alive and active in you today to raise you up from your mentality of being stuck in carnality. God is here today. His presence is here today. But you got to want him. You want to think about God. He loves us all so much. He'll let you stay in your mess. Yes, he will. He'll let you stay right where you are in your mess. Because you refuse to open your mouth. And God says, this is the word of God today. God is saying right now in the atmosphere. He's shifting the atmosphere. He's driving out unclean spirits. He's releasing the spirit of worship and praise in this place to give you what you're expecting God to do in your life. How many of you in here today need God to do something for you? How many of you in here today need God to set you free in some area of your life? Guess what? It's already done. Because God calls those things that be not. That's already worked. So God says, I saw your ending when you got your breakthrough. You got your deliverance. I saw you already set free. But all you got to do, Jesus said to the man whose child who was having seizures, he said, only believe. God is saying to us today, only believe. Change your confession from a confession of doubt to a confession of faith to believe what you want God to do in your life. And I guarantee, God said before you utter a word out of your mouth, before a thought is into your mind, <laughs> He's already done hurt you. 
That's the supernatural God that intervenes in our natural existence to manifest himself in our lives like never before. Amen. Amen. I had to get that out this morning. God is trying to provoke us today. He's provoking us to get into his presence. He's provoking us to let go of ourselves and worship him today. Amen. Hope you got a song for us today. You got a song for us today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know one thing. I just want to say again to our pastor. Happy birthday to him. Just want to thank all of Redeemed Faith for showing out for him yesterday to support his celebration. We had an awesome time. Pastor was so surprised. It blew his mind on yesterday. And I thank God for safe haven. They showing up in there as well. God, God has really did a great thing for our pastor yesterday. And so many people showed out. People he haven't even seen in a long time came out to be a support to him for his birthday, his golden birthday. 50 years old. His golden birthday. That's a thing to celebrate, to praise a 50 was the same time of Pentecost. And God showed up as a rushing mighty wind to display his glory even in the celebration. I'm excited today. I'm so excited. My excited is excited today. I just can't hold my peace today. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. yes. It's still Hallelujah. a celebration. Sure is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless Thank you.
praise on today. Giving. You got an announcement today, too? Okay. As a matter of fact, we get ready for the announcements. But as she's coming, I just want to share this one thing. A lot of times, when I was on my prayer line this morning, God revealed to me that many people who go to church, they itemize their pastor over God. They put him over God in their lives. So if he doesn't come to church, many people are absent. And this is everywhere. It's not just here at Redeemed Faith, but it's everywhere. Because people are so used to a man being in charge, and when that man is absent, the Bible says when the shepherd is away, the sheep will scatter. And that's what's happening a lot of times in today's time. A lot of people scatter. Because the shepherd don't show up. And that shouldn't be that way. And God wants us at redeemed faith to know we need to be committed to the Lord, not to just the man. Committed to the Lord. Because when you committed to the Lord, God takes care of the man and the blessing that flows from him like the anointing that flows on him will trickle down to every person in the house. And what blessing God pours on him, guess what he does? He released the same blessing and favor on every person connected to him. Amen. Bring them. 
we're here during the week, and, and Sister Davis, Dick, Deacon and Davis is here on Tuesdays, uh, along with Mother Brian and Sister Joanne and, and, and Mother Joyce. We're here every Tuesday, um, um, and we have other volunteers also um, outside of the church. So if you just want to drop something off, you can drop it off actually any day during the week before, too. Um, baptism also will be on December 18th from 11 to 2 for those of you who want to be baptized before the new year. I do have a list if anybody else is interested. Just let me know or let this, um, Sandra Anderson know. Um, I do have a signed up sheet. I will be calling those who signed up this week to remind them. Also, um, Deacon Davis is asking that all the deacons be here on that day to help um, to be at the side of the pastor during that time. Um, New Year's watch service will be on New Year's Eve starting at 10 p.m. Redeemed Faith Fellowship Men's Prayer Breakfast will start in February. I believe it's going to be the second week in February, second Saturday in February, per Minister Harris. Keep, keep a listen for more information will be coming. Um, report cards. Pastor and Jeanette Anderson will want to encourage our youth to always do their best in school so students when you get your report cards please bring them to me um i will give you a gift card um to either mcdonald's Culver's, or wendy's um you cannot send the report cards by your parents or grandparents amen um safe haven women's ministry swap sisters with a testimony will be hosting their prayer brunch. The last one for the year actually will be Wednesday, December 15th at noon. It will be held at the Liz and Terrence Community Room, 2730 West Lisbon Avenue, and will be catered by Alicia Soul Food and Jesus Creations. We are also asking for the women to bring a secret gift, Christmas gift, and please keep your gifts a secret, either wrapped or in a gift bag. Fellowship is currently closed to new members until January. This is, the, this is for the women who has been coming since September. Please contact Minister Deborah Hill. Raise your hand. Amen. Or Deacon is Vivian Davis in her absence. Um, if you have any questions, um, please see them. Thank you. God bless um, Pastor Terry. Are there any more announcements? Um, just a second, y'all. I know what this is going to say. I don't even know why I had to um, flip the page. But are there any guests? If so, would you please stand? I see that there aren't any. These are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Thank you for those announcements. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody prepare your hearts for giving at this time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good to see Rodney back in the house and his wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Been missing. <laughs> Welcome back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. When you get your offering, I want everyone to please stand. Yeah, everyone please stand. Jesus.
everyone has given. Deborah Hill come and pray over the offering. And then after that, we're going to do our declaration and proceed with what God has for us to do today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the giver and the giver on today. We thank you that it will go to the growing of the church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right, remain standing. If you're expecting God to do something for you, then you need to repeat this declaration. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord. Enlarge, enlarge my territory. You might need a little room to just expand a little bit. And I want you to just say it like you mean it with some authority to let the devil know I ain't playing with this thing today. Lord, Lord. Enlarge, enlarge my territory. My you territory. might even want to turn around on that thing because we're telling the devil you're not taking what God has for me. I'm taking it back, taking it back. Lord, enlarge, enlarge. my territory. My territory. One more time. Let's get a little rock. Lord, Lord, enlarge my territory. my territory. Won't God do it? Yes, he will. Won't God do it? Yes, Won't will. God do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, give God a shout in the house today. Because I don't know about you, but I know God will do what he promised to do for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We got a testimony this morning by mighty man of God, Anthony Hibbler. He wants to share a testimony this morning. We're going to have him come forth with his testimony. And then after that, hope you got another song for us today. <laughs> if not, we got it. <laughs> we got you. So it was one day yesterday on Friday. Everybody. So it was just all four of us. We was in the car. It was night. So then after that, we went to the Goodwill. <laughs> and then, so we just came to pick up something. Mm -hmm. But then after that, we ended up picking up two things. Mm -hmm. It was this guitar. Mm -hmm. So we came at the place. And then this man needed to pray for. So... He told me, can I pray for him? I did. So then, after that, he let God told him I could get it for one dollar. My wish came true. I said, I wish it was one dollar. <laughs> and then I prayed for that man. Mm -hmm. He started crying. Yeah. So then that's how I noticed that God is not just one man. He's a man of joy and nothing will stop that. Even the devil, the devil, the lies, the attitudes, nothing. Because God, because God, if God wasn't here, then if God wasn't here, if he didn't die on the cross, 
my mother would have never had me. <laughs> and who would like the city having no people in it? Oh, yeah. God would not like that, but you know something, mm -hmm. that God still got us. Yes, he does. God still got us. Well, the preacher right there. Yes, he does. Amen. And, and I want to conclude that the man was so, y'all, this man, he was crying. He was a, he was a white guy. And uh, when, when Deuce, um, I mean, excuse me, mighty man of God, pray for him. He, the man was so overjoyed because he said he needed this on today. He had a rough day, like yesterday, day before yesterday. And it was so rough. But when he came, the, like the presence of the Lord came. And he was so happy and overjoyed. And the man said he, he is, he is for all, he's always changed. He's forever changed after re, uh, meeting him. And he said this, this young man blessed his soul for the whole week. He said, <laughs> y'all, I mean, it was this white guy. And he was red, y'all, totally red, crying out to God, giving his heart to the Lord. And he was like, I just never been touched that, like that before. I mean, I just, you know, I was just so happy. I was crying. And Deuce was like, oh, my God, he's so red. <laughs> but you know what? He said we all, he, we all, even though he said he was red, he, he said that we're all the same. I mean, you know, all, excuse me, not red, but he's, he was a white man, but he said we're all the same color on the inside. And I love that part about uh, what my son said to him. Amen. Amen. But it was a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Jesus. Amen. God is good. God is good. You see how he's using, he using the babes, you know. He said, I'll bring up a nation that will obey. That's what God said. But, you know, I just want to take this time to give honor to God ahead of my life and to his son, Jesus. Pastor in his absence, the minister, everyone that's here. You know, I just want to say something. You know what? The devil used all kind of tactics, all kind of anything to try to get you. You know, and uh, like yesterday, it wasn't me, but you know what? This is what I go and what I'm going through. When you hear something that you can tell it ain't you when you're being attacked, you know, but you got to always bring yourself past that moment. I always say that because he'll try anything to get you down. Like when I talk to you about, but you know what? I couldn't let him win. That's the reason why I'm here today. I couldn't let him win. The main thing when he tried to get you down and said, okay, I'm not going, I'm not going. But you know what? The minute you step in that door, you did what God wanted you to do. See, I was worried about this young lady here. I said, Lord, I'm, I need to get her to church. I need to get her to church. And then my daughter's truck wouldn't stop. But you know what? I called Pastor Henry. His fiance went and got her. But you know what? My main goal was on it ain't about me. It's about God's people. And that's why I say it was the reason God wanted us here, wanted us all here. But the devil tried to get next to you. You see, when the devil tried to get next to you, you know what you do? You plead the blood. Once you plead the blood, you got it covered. See, because God got you covered. What he said, I got you covered. You know, and that's what he's been doing all week. You know, I've been, it's been, it been up and down, up and down. But you know what? He has said, he's like when I was praying, he never put no more than you're able to bear. When you think you can't bear, you know what? You know you can because he, what he said. He said that I, I gave you that because I know you can bear. You know, and if, when, you, when you don't bear that part, what happens? You start all over again. Because you know why? This journey, he didn't say it was going to be easy. He didn't say his journey was going to be easy, but you know what he said? He always be there. He'd never leave us or forsake us. And I thank God for he loving us so much. And I know if a pastor probably watching, I want to say happy 50th birthday. And many more God got for you. Because God got you and your wife covered. Covered under the blood of Jesus. You know, when we're covered under the blood, you know what? Can't nothing stop us. Can't nothing stop us when we covered under the blood. See, it's something about that blood which he shed 2,000 years ago. I don't know what it is, y'all. But God, there's something about that blood. You know, he, he got, he, he just covered us. He just covered us. That's what this season is about. We think it's about gifts, but it ain't about gifts. 
See, God is using me for a reason right now. I know it is. He's to let everyone know it ain't about the gifts. It's about his gift. His gift he gave. He gave 2,000 years ago is that gift. That gift, that's what it's about. And he don't want us to put no one above him. He don't want us to put no one above him, y'all. And he said, you know what he said? See, all sin is sin. Ain't none greater, ain't none lesser. So what, else, what we do, let's pray for one another, not talk about one another. Because I can tell you one thing, God loves us all. He loves us all, he do. And uh, I think my nephew he here today, God got you, young man. You and your family just be strong. And I tell you to keep praying my strength in the Lord. And keep praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. We came to praise God on today. Amen. Amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. I don't know what you come to do. 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 I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. I come to give God praise. I come to give God praise. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Oh, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I come to clap my hands. My hands. I come to stomp my feet. my feet. I come to give God praise. praise. I come to give Him praise. praise. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Nobody, no, nobody, nobody, no, nobody, not my sister, not the deacon, nobody, no, nobody, nobody, no, nobody, nobody, no, nobody, 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 can hold me like Jesus, can rock me like Jesus, nobody, 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 not the pastor, not the deacon, not my 
sister, nobody, not my brother. Nobody, 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 nobody,
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, give God some praise one more time. What about you? But I come to celebrate the King of Glory. We have 13 days before Christmas. But in those 13 days, I'm going to keep on praising him. Hallelujah, Jesus. In those 13 days, I'm going to keep on magnifying him. Because yeah. he's the reason for the season. He gave the greatest gift God could ever give. With a lot of son to be born in a manger. To be our savior. To be the Messiah. To be the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. Amen. Good to have Pastor Terry in the house today. Amen. We had a homegoing service on this past Friday. And boy, was it wild. <laughs> but I thank God because we knew how to deal with it. Because when you stay on the battlefield, that's why I love the old songs. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Because when you know you're in the battlefield, you know how to arm yourself in the battle. And I thank God for allowing our musician Jeff to come out to support, even on Friday as well. We still had a wonderful time. God spoke a message through me to encourage the family through transitional faith. And we all are in a transition. Every day you get up in the morning, you're in a transition. Because you have to fight to stay on the right side with God. You got to transition from the mind of the flesh to the mind of the spirit every day. How many of you ready for the word today? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Today we're going to have a, a prophet young come forth. The way God uses her today to bring us a message. And after her, I'll come forth and close it out per the instruction of our pastor. And I thank God for his stewardship to the Lord. And that I can be accountable to the authority of because the Bible said, obey them to have rule over you, for they watch over your soul. And I thank God for the shepherd of this house. Because he's a mighty man of God. A mighty man of valor. A mighty man of praise. And I love his spirit. Because it doesn't matter what he goes through, the good and bad, he still got a praise. And if you can't learn anything from that, something wrong with you. But I tell you, I, I'm learning so much. In the five years, five is grace. God graced me to be here five years, going on six years with this ministry, serving under his leadership, and I'm honored. And the Bible said, give honor to whom honor is due. I thank God for the people he put in this house, for the musicians of this house. I thank the Lord, because without everybody coming together collectively, we would not make up a part of the body of Christ. But because we purpose to come together week after week, Sunday after Sunday, to do what God wants us to do, to receive what we're expecting God to pour into our lives. And God will do what you expect to do, Kim. He got you. Everything you need, he got you. And the word of the Lord for you today, my sister, is keep on plugging in to the power source. Don't allow the enemy to disconnect you from the power source. And the more you stay connected to the body of Christ, your strength is going to be greater against the enemy when he comes against you. That's what God told me to tell you. So I want everyone, if you will, stand up with me one more time and point your hand towards the woman of God. And I want you to repeat after me. Prophet is young. Prophet is young. Speak the word. Let the anointing of the Lord fall fresh on you. That you speak by the spirit of the living God. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How y'all doing? Good morning. God is.
is so good. I mean, he is just so good. My grandbaby always seemed to, when God give it to me, he always seemed to make sure that I hear it. <laughs> and, I, and I love it. I love it. But when you, when when he was growing up, when he was growing up, I had a different aspect. Like little boy, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but I thank God that all that that was put into him, that he's able to use it. Some of y'all might not understand what he might be saying or how it might be coming out. But it's like this. Let God have his way. Before I go any further, Father God, I want to thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for allowing me, God, to be able, God, to talk this word. And God, I pray, O oh Father God, that you would increase as I decrease. I don't want to, I don't even want to feel me in this, God, but know that it's you. And God, I want to thank you for my pastor in his absence. Thank you, God, for allowing him, oh God, to see the big 5-0. God, don't move his mountain, Lord Jesus, but God, give him the strength to climb. And God, don't take away his stumbling block. But lead him all around. And God, not just him, God, but his wife and his children and his grandchildren. And Father God, as we, his, his flock, oh, Father God, we pray, God, that you would just, God, work on us too. We need it. Um, go with me, if you will, to Romans 12. And it reads, I'm only going to do one, two, and three. And it reads, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You may be seated. Um, I know it sounds sounds different. I'm in the... uh, I'm in the NIV. In the NIV. I'm a, I'm a King James one. And I'm in the NIV. <laughs> um, and just for a few minutes, I want to talk about take out the garbage of your mind. Of your mind. Take out the garbage of your mind. I know y'all be like, where'd she get that from? God. God. And um, so to um, talk about this, taking out this garbage, first of all, we want to um, talk a little bit on the mind. Um, Philippians 4 and... Six. It says everyone's mind importance is also shown in, in Philippians. Well, this is Philippians five, but it says, um, and the and the peace of God which transcend all understanding will guard and will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. 
Philippians 4 and 7 says, Paul remind, reminds Timothy that God has given us a sound mind. This means your thoughts can be shielded from lies of the devil. And he tell them all the time. And then he goes on to say to uh, to uh, ridiculous, unfound, and crazy thoughts that you know that we get from the devil that have tried to grip your mind in the past. I mean, mind you, he went to the past. He went to the past. Hmm. Why would he go to the past? <laughs> but in the past, he said, all you have to do is grab hold of God's word and his spirit. So what Paul was saying to Timothy that God already gave us a sound mind. Our mind is already sound. How come? We lost it. We lost the soundness. Because so much, we allow so much to get in and then to go on with, uh, with this. It says that God is telling everyone, all of us, to put his words into our minds. said, reason why he said this, he said, we can easily be deceived in the mind. Because y'all know Satan is fishing. He, he's trying to get our mind in any way that he, he can, every way he can. So it said, the mind should be very it, it should be very important to everyone for it is the gateway for either good or bad. That's it right there, y'all. The good or the bad. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. So when, when God gave me this take out the garbage of the mind, I was on this. I was actually on the phone. And then what came to mind was the mental illness that we go through. And, and I said, I used the mental illness because when, when I was going through all of this stuff, I'm, I'm wondering why is these people keep diagnosing me with all of these things. They said I'm depressed. They said she's, uh, you just, you got anxiety. Then, not only did they say that, but they um, just gave me a whole long list of what's making me ill. Hmm. But I found out it was a mental mind. It was a mental mind. And the reason why I say that, because God told me, God said, I could speak to this body. And, and when we get to the point when we can't speak to our bodies, guess what? We done fell into the mentalness. We, we went to the mental part because we, we done lost sight of where God at. So if, they, if you go to the doctor, when you go into the doctor, when you first go, you go in there saying, well, I hope when I get there, he don't tell me that this is going on and that is going on. But you find out as soon as you get there, they waiting on you to pile you up with a whole lot of stuff. So as I was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, they telling me I got all this stuff. But guess what? Everything they gave me that looked like a piece of medicine didn't do nothing. You know why I didn't do nothing? Because it, it was nothing they were saying. I was being attacked all the time. 
I was being attacked all the time because this devil didn't like me. He still don't like me. But I don't like him either. So that makes, you know, that makes you and me don't like each other. Huh? But so, and, 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 and especially like, I, I don't only get on my knees, but I stretch down on my face. That made him mad. He was really mad. So he was just pouring everything. He was only putting them uh, illusions. He wasn't giving them to me because I kept knowing, okay, it's something about what's going on, and it's not these doctors, but it's you. So what I found out, hmm, <laughs> I found out, I was just, like I said, I was being attacked. But when I found out, and I start speaking over my body. I found out I don't need that. I don't need that medication you was giving me, making me have a headache. The, the doctors used to get mad at me because I used to tell them, wait, I got the side effects to that, so don't give me that. I was in, in the hospital, just came from under surgery, and the man was saying something to me about the medication. I said, I can't take that. Don't give me that. So that was my cue right there. Speak to the doctors as well. Hey, no, I don't want it. So ever since that day, and it's been some years and years and years ago since I've been to the doctor. Okay? Every time something happens, every time a pain comes, every time, I command it to leave. But going on back to the, the the garbage in the mine. So the doctor done told us we got all of this stuff. He said, you got depression, anxiety, dementia, and, and you're just stressed. Stressed. You're stressed. How do you get stressed? I, I'm still trying to figure it out. Because I really don't know. Everybody tell me, you stressed out. When? Where? Why? How did I get there? Because I don't see what y'all see. And so, to me, I think all of that is garbage. It's garbage. Depression is garbage. Anxiety it's garbage. All of this stuff they be saying. But the only reason why I accepted cancer because I know God had me going through a test. He tested me to see if I was going to fall into that too. But see, the reason why I said that one because when, 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 God, when God is doing it, you can't do nothing but line up with it. So that's what I had to do. I had to line up with it. I know y'all have heard me say this before, but I was right. God had me doing a word a day. He would give me this word when I'm asleep, even like I'm, I'm half asleep or whatever, however it was, but he was giving the word. On this day that I was going into the hospital to... Uh, had the surgery for cancer, my baby said, my oldest child, who I no longer hear, but she said, as I was going out the door at 4 something in the morning, she said, Mama, what's the word for the day? Look back at her, heal. And kept on walking, you know, not. Because, look, I didn't know then what God was doing. But when I came home, he said, let me tell you something. He said, you was already healed before you even went. I just needed that poison to get out your body. So the poison is gone, y'all. Come 
last month on the 22nd of November, <laughs> it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago. And see, that's what I'm saying. When God, when God is working, we got to let him do it. We got to know when God is working too now. Because don't get him mixed up with the enemy. You get him mixed up. You're going to go back to the garbage in your mind. You're going to get confused. <laughs> There's going to be some confusion in that mind. And so, how, how do we replace these things? Because, look, I, I, when I was looking through, I was looking through the Bible and I never in my all time reading the Bible, there is scripture for the word garbage. It's about lead money. But mine, I'm just talking about, see, because when, when, we, when we don't put our mind where it needs to be, but we don't have our mind like the word says. As he was telling Timothy, we already have a sound mind. So in the morning time, when I get up, I'm like, God, thank you for waking me up clothed in my right mind. In, in the right mind. Because I could have been getting up, walking into the door, and running around walking into the door. It, that's that's a mind thing right there, and it, and we put so much stuff in our minds that we even forget about God. We don't even see God in what we're doing sometimes because our mind is somewhere else. He said, "He just, I just read it. He said our mind is so easily just." easily to be messed up with good or bad things. In this day and time, these young people need a new mindset. But how can they get it? How can they get it? They don't like going to church. They say, I mean, I have people tell me, everybody in the church the churches ain't, ain't right and all it. Well, actually, really, the church ain't right because the church just sitting here. The church is the building until you make it, make you be the church. Until you turn around and start living for God. Until you start speaking and moving and, and doing the things of God. But if you ain't doing none of that, well, you're still looking at that building. These, these, these four walls. These four walls. So, we have to be able to start, I mean, just start, um, living for God. I mean, seriously. Now it's more serious than ever. Ever. I, I, I got great grandchildren. And all I got to do is call one of, one of the grandchildren's phone. Everybody going to get on the phone and say, hey, grandma. But they love to hear when you talking to them about God, they love the music. But what's wrong with the babies? Nothing. It's just who we got to teach the babies. Because the mama and them ain't thinking about teaching the baby. They rather teach the baby how to twerk. They rather teach the baby how to do all this stuff on TikTok. Oh, my God. 
But see, trash would mean anything that may corrupt your mind and your heart from truth and shows are not promoting godly behavior. It shows that. You know why? Because we're going to act it out. We're going to act it out. And then sometimes, especially when it be my family, I be one like, smack them. Smack them back into existence. But I, I, I know that God did never, you know, he ain't never. But he, he, he did. Jesus whooped the whoop them people in the temple. <laughs> he did that. But that's what I be want to do sometimes. But Lord knows it's a lot of praying. So that's how we whip them with prayer. Because God's going to give you that word to convict. Not only that, sometimes you just got to just grab them by the hand and take them on. Just walk with them sometimes. It's, 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 we just, we just talking about the garbage of the mind now. To, even to the point where a lot of people say when you use profane language, you're cussing. <laughs> you're cussing. I thought, Maybe I read it wrong. I thought God was the only one to do the curse, cursing thing, but not like they say it. But when you use these bad words, that's profane. But our children now is doing more of that than anything. And stealing cars. That is garbage. Come on, baby. I'm winding it up right now. I, I can go on, but we going I know y'all see the little stuff on the floor. This is um, the stuff that God gave me. How how do we uh, get? You know, we we wanna talk about because we got so much garbage. Instead of um, out here with your face frowned up, laugh about it. Laugh. This is garbage. You know, this is in the garbage. But I, I can't sweep it up because I ain't bring the broom. But this is what we do. Because it's a lot of garbage. What we do, we sweep up all this garbage. We're going to sweep this garbage up. And all of this stuff is in the garbage. But, you know, when we pick up the trash, I know I do. I don't know if everybody do it. Because I, when I start cleaning up, I'm cleaning everything that looks like it's going to go in the garbage until I get, get the pile. And so, um, for all the of, all of, all of people that say, I'm weak, get some strength. Prayer. 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 Prayer going to give you some strength every time. Every time. Oh, that the word is too. Give it to me, girl. I got it down here, y'all. Prayer. But this prayer ain't no garbage because, see, I'm going through the garbage right now. I'm getting this stuff out. This stuff I need. Actually, these, these are the little stickers I had on. I was supposed to put on my, my uh, outfit for the sister store. Uh, um, and so when you feel like you ain't got nobody and you just sit down I know you know God thank God thank God thank, thank God you, you gotta thank him cause he woke you up this morning woke you up with all that mess on your mind all that garbage in your heart he woke you up still Next one is believe. Do you believe that he can do it? 
do you believe that he will do it? I mean, do you? Could you? People tell you a lot of times they have all of this on their mind already. Well, I know what I'm going to say when they come up to me. I'm going to say, yes, I believe. And I'm going to say, yes, you lying. Because that's how they be. They, they lie about it. Because they don't want you to talk to them about it. I'm not going to pick up all of these, you know. Wait, I'm going to end it though. <laughs> I'm in it though, baby. <laughs> and the next thing is, we got to have what? Some faith. Faith. You know why don't nobody want to have faith? Because it's work. Work. Faith without work is what? Dead. <laughs> yes. So. Then we gotta we gonna get some joy. This, this love, we got joy and love. What else don't we have? And trust. Joy, love, and trust. Do it sound like they go together? Sound like they married. <laughs> a little joy, love, and some trust. Seven cousins. <laughs> Best friends. <laughs> and then another time when you're sad, you can say it might not be nothing. It might just be one word. And that one word could just be Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I do it all the time, y'all. <laughs> he wake me up in the morning. Or lay me down late at night. He don't give me a song. And I love it. Because he wakes me up with a song. I got this one song that I be listening to by uh, Tim Rogers. And I be listening to it. And it say, I surrender. Now, that's one thing you got to do. You don't want to do it, but you got to. Because when you think you ain't getting nowhere, when you think um, all hope is gone, but if you decide to raise your hands, or if you decide to get down on your knees, huh, he good. God is good. Um, now I have... Peace, growth, and courage. You got to grow in the, in the Lord to get some peace. And then you got to have some courage to keep it. Amen. See, y'all, y'all, when y'all, when you don't fight the devil, he feel like he already got you. Like, well, she ain't bothering me, I ain't bothering her. But I can't do that. Like I said, I got great-grandchildren, grandchildren, and children. And then not only that, I have some children out here in this world that I watch grow up. I was in the school being a, 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 a parent coordinator. Not a, yeah, that, that one right there. Being the parent coordinator. And I had so many children came into the school that was broken. And all they needed was me to just sit down and talk to them. Some of them had problems with doing their, their work. I mean, when, when God allowed me to see them, they still be saying, Hey, Grandma. Hey, Auntie. You know, they still, girl, you, where, where you get that talk? It's, it's one guy that, his, his name was uh, Nishan. When I first met Nishan, Nishan was like this. Now, he is way up there. He like, I think he said he's 7'1". Yes, 
he left from the school and came back to the school. I was like, boy, what happened to you? He said, I just grew. You right? when God have you doing things, I mean, you do them. You can't, you can't play with God. That's all. I got striving smiles, so I said I wasn't going to pick them all up, but I got them. You can get the white stuff. Strive for the life that God has given you to live for him. Strive for it. Make known what he has given you. He said that he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. How come we can't keep the sound mind that he gave us? I'm taking out the garbage yard. Come back and get these. She picked up all the garbage. Wait. Go get them too. But that's, that's all, y'all. That's, that's what I had down there. It picked up the garbage. Because we got we to gotta learn how to take out the garbage. Because when we don't take out the garbage, it caused all of this depression. Did y'all see me how I was picking them up? Some people who had to pick all of that up, that's in your life. When you got to pick it up in your life, it's different from just picking it up with your hand. But when you got to pick it up with your life, when you got to live it, yeah. and you get frustrated. You get frustrated. So then now the doctor going to say you depressed. Now he going to say you got anxiety. I'm like, and the Bible told me don't be anxious for nothing, so I can't be that. I ain't anxious. That's how I broke down to the doctor. I ain't anxious, so stop talking to me like that. But I thank God for all that he has done in my life. In my life. The mother of seven children plus two. That's nine. <laughs> and, then, and then I had, I had, my brother's children, my sister's children, and then my other sister's children. Each one of the, well, my brother was two children, and my two sisters, they had three. So add that on to nine. <laughs> and, I, and I used to take them down, walk down the street with them and everything. While I'm walking down the street, I give out instructions. When I go to the store, I give out instructions. If you don't follow them, hmm, God knows what's good for you. <laughs> all right then, y'all. Y'all take it easy. And God bless all of us in here. Hey, Amen. Come on, give God praise for that message. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome message, Prophet Young. Awesome message. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but that was powerful because a lot of us have garbage in our mentalities and God is trying to break you from those things that hold you in captivity but there's so much resistance and one thing I heard from out of all things that she said faith without works is dead you claim you got faith in God your faith is going to be challenged it's going to be tested it's going to be stretched in order for God to do his perfect work in your life, it's going to mean you got to get out the way and let God lead the way. In Mark chapter 4, I want everybody to stand if I read the scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I'm going to make this quick. I'm not going to hold this long. And it says, In the same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. When they had sent 
away the multitude. He took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. A lot of us missed that. The waves were so intense to the boat began to get full with water. And it says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship doing what? Asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Father, we thank you right now for this word, O oh God, that you have me to release into your people, God. Let the anointing fall upon every heart to bring conviction, bring change in all of our lives, to remove the garbage from our mentalities and from our hearts, O oh God, that we have free access to receive the engrafted word with meekness, which is able to save our souls from going into a destiny of hell, and that you produce life in us, God, that we live by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated, amen. I've been studying faith for the last couple of weeks, and one thing about faith, Hebrews 11 and 1 is the foundation of our faith that we all talk about, about now faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And if we know that to be true, then why do so many people lack faith in the body of Christ? We're not talking about the people in the world, people that don't know Christ. We're talking about those who have a relationship with Christ. Faith definition. In the Hebrew word, faith is imuna, which is understood faith or belief, but it's often also translated as faithfulness. In the Greek, the word is pistis, which means to believe, belief, firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction, or faithfulness. What is the difference between faith and belief? Faith is the strong trust and confidence in something or someone. Belief is a state or a habit of mind in which we trust or have confidence placed in some person or thing. And one thing, when as God began to reveal to me, he says, so many people in the body of Christ, they say, I got faith in God. I got faith that God can move mountains. I got faith that God can heal. God can deliver. God can do this. God can do that. But soon as the storm comes. We change our conviction. Now we have a confession of doubting God's ability, doubting God's word to manifest in our lives to change the situation in our life. The garbage mentality, what she was just talking about, is how we allow so much stuff of the flesh, the carnal nature, to filtrate our mindsets because we allow the things from the television, the radios, from people to speak into our ear gate. And when those negative things get into our ear gates, it goes down. I, I teach a lot about the mindset because that is the greatest demise of any born again believer. The enemy knows if I can captivate your attention. She just read the script in Philippians talking about, about the, having the peace of God. I cannot have peace if I'm stressed. I cannot have peace if I'm worried. And it's very important as a child of God to recognize what is the root cause of me to be stressed. And when God began to speak, as she was speaking, I'm listening in the spirit. And God says, when she said, she, they told me I'm stressed. They told me I got this, I got that. And I'm like, I don't feel like I got all that stuff. 
it went back to a song we've seen back in the 80s, whose report will you believe? Because you have to make a decision within yourself. Am, am I going to listen to the doctor report, believe everything they diagnose, the whole list of illnesses, the whole list of problems, the whole list of dilemmas, the whole list of junk? I'm going to believe all that stuff, or am I going to reject it? And, and one thing she said is something I've been teaching in my lessons, the balance of the mind. It's people find themselves sick mentally in the spirit. Because it's a spiritual condition that attacks the mindset, which attacks the heart, which destroys your life. And God says we have to be aware of the enemy's tactics. The way he said we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Because God makes it so clear every time I open up the scriptures, it's something God is warning me to be on guard. So I was thinking about this story. It says the same thing. This is when Jesus just came from teaching on the mountain. And, and it's like the same day, he said, let us, tell my disciples, let's go to the other side. And he said there were small ships that were following them. So let, let us know he went along. He had other people besides his disciples that were interested in following him wherever he went. So as they got in the ship, it said there arose a great storm. I was thinking about this this week. I said, what storm is it that we allow in our hearts to breach our faith? What storm the enemy afflicts upon you to cause confusion in your mentality? What storm is it that the enemy uses as an assassination against the plan and the purpose and the will God has for your life? And many of us, as God's children, don't even know what it is. Because it became comfortable. We've been familiar with the stuff so long, I forgot the name of it. It became part of my life. So I'm stuck. That's why God said, we're stuck in the mindset. When he's trying to break the mindset of suicide, depression, anxiety, stress, worrying, getting all these other illnesses, diabetes, heart condition. A lot of illnesses come because of the mind. Because if I'm not feeding my body the healthy substance to produce in my mindset to bring life into me, guess what I'm doing? I'm killing myself mentally, which affects you on the outside in your body. So as they were in the ship, it says a great wind, a storm of wind, the wind, we, we all seen the wind doing some things around our country. Look in the news, you see the wind affecting cities. Tornado winds just destroyed in six, six different states. Why? Because the enemy is letting us know that he's still on the warpath doing what he's wanting to do to destroy God's people. And when God began to speak, he said, what happens is the enemy begins to infiltrate our structure because our faith has been breached. When your faith is breached, it produces nothing but unbelief and doubt against God's word. So God's word will no longer have effect or power to bring a change in your life. So when the enemy breaches your faith, you be like the wind's coming against you and it tosses you to and forth. That's why so many people, I mean back in the uh, early 90s, there was a movement that was going around where prophets were coming in different places in the city. And everybody said, I'm going over to get a word. Or the prophet over there, I'm going to get a word. Prophet over there, I'm going to get a word. Everybody chasing for a word. But they weren't reading the word. How can you get a prophetic word from God if you're not reading his word? God says, Study to show thyself approved unto God as a workman that needs not to be ashamed. How can I not be ashamed before Christ if I don't know his word? Guess what? St. John 1 and 1 says what? In the beginning was the what? The word. 
So if the word was in the beginning, and we have the word living in our hearts, then guess what? You got to study the word. How can I know a God if I don't study about his nature? How can I serve a God if I don't know about his abilities? How can I know God if I'm not allowing him to be applied to my life? The word brings transformation. God's had me speak on Friday, transferring by faith. Because a lot of times we get stuck in a religious system. We're not transferring to righteousness. God trying to pull you. He's trying to pull you out of darkness. Guess what we do? We go back and get back in darkness. Because I'm comfortable in my sin. I'm comfortable in my rebellion. I'm comfortable in my stubbornness. So I go back to my idol worship because I'm stuck in a system. Glory to God. Oh, can't talk about shit in the bull. Hallelujah. So when the storm came with a great wind, it said it began to beat the ship so that the ship would be full. Guess what happens when you're on the ocean and the winds come real, real strong? It forced the water to rise. And whatever's right there in this area is going to begin to fill it. A lot of folk in the house of God are being filled with garbage from the mindset of the world. And God says, your ship is being tossed and turned. But because you're not trusting God, your anchor has been released. You can't even hold yourself no more. So no matter what the devil wants to do in your life, whatever it is the devil wants to do to destroy you, you willfully walk into his traps. God says a wake-up call for the church today. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, ye people of the Lord, and begin to see God's face while you're able to be found. God says, when you call upon me, you'll be found to me. I will show you great and mighty things you have not known, heard, or seen, because I am Jehovah God. Glory to God. But I love it. Because when the storms come, I believe that Jesus knew the storm was coming. It didn't catch him by surprise. The reason why he went and rested. See, the problem comes in, in the house of God, we don't know how to rest. We get so busy doing stuff for other folk till it drains your strength and your energy. You have nothing left to take care of yourself. God says, just like Jesus, he was in the hinder part of the ship, the back of the ship. He laid down on a pillow to rest in the storm. Somebody just missed that. He was in the hull of the ship. He was resting in the storm. Then on top of that, the same ones, this really caught my attention. The same ones that watched him do miracles. The same ones that saw him feed the 5,000 on the mountain. The same ones that saw him take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude. The same ones that witnessed him raising Lazarus from the dead. The same ones did not have faith in a storm. Do you got faith in your storm? God says, when the test comes for alcoholism, drug addiction, and all this type of perversion, do you got faith in your storm? He keep you from it. See, the problem comes in when I get in the storm. I get stuck in the storm. I think it's normal. Storms ain't normal. But because the enemy puts, uh, he plays on your mindset, he plays on your psyche, he makes you think that the things that are abnormal are normal. So when I'm stuck in a storm, I can't get out the storm. That's why so many people are suicidal because they're stuck in a mental storm. That's why people get stuck in addictions because they're stuck in a storm. And God says, I'm breaking the cycle of the storm of your minds today. 
glory to God. Woo, glory. We cannot keep on willfully walking in the storm and say, devil, it's okay to do what you want to do in my life. The devil is a liar. God says, today I have the power in my mouth to speak into your storm and tell your storm to shut up. Be quiet. Peace be still. I guarantee when you allow yourself to be stretched in faith, something on the inside won't let you settle in the storm because God begins to stir you up on the inside. And when the storm comes and the billows start raging, I gotta go to my daddy say, Daddy, you got a problem to deal with because the storm is raging in my life and I don't know how to handle it myself. So I come to you, Daddy. I say, Daddy, I need you to show up in my storm because I can't handle the pains. I can't handle the troubles. I can't handle the cycle anymore. I'm tired of being stuck in the pillows and the waves. So God, I'm calling on you right now to speak your word in my mindset because my mind is in confusion. My mind is being tormented. I'm tossing turning all night long. And God, I'm calling on you right now because I need you to move in my situation. I don't want to be stuck no more dealing with pornography and homosexuality. I don't want to be stuck in adultery and lying. I don't want to be stuck in backbiting and hating no folk. I don't want to be stuck with unforgiveness and hatefulness in my heart. God, I want to be set free on the inside of me because I know that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power to break the cycle off your heart. There's power to strengthen the weak and the feeble. There's power to open up the blinded eyes. There's power to stop the deaf ears. There's power to change your thought life today. All I gotta do is do like disciples. Lord, save me. I can't handle this by myself. So when Jesus got up from the ship, he looked at the wind. He looked at the sea. He said, peace, be still. Peace, be calm. Peace, shut your mouth. Peace, stop tormenting my people. Peace, you have your way in their life. I have my perfect will in their life. Peace, abide right now. I want to tell you something else. So Jesus looked at the disciples. I built you all this time. But yet you still don't believe in my power that I gave you to your hand. So he said, why did you doubt? Why did you faint in the storm? Why do you know how to handle your situation? He said, oh, you a little faith. Why did you doubt? I want to tell you today that today uh, God is trying to stretch your faith beyond the doubt a reasonable of the mindset. Because the mind always want to doubt God's word. The mind want to always go against God's word. The mind always want to oppose God's word. The mind always want to resist God's word. But God says today, why are you doubting me? I called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. I put my Holy Ghost on the inside of you. I gave you fire, fire on the inside. I gave you fire to consume the works of darkness. I gave you fire to speak to your situation. Commanded God to move. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just can't hold my peace sometimes. I've been through so much storm and rain. Trials and tests came to prove my faith. And God says when you stand up against temptation, against trials of life, you will receive a crown of righteousness. I want to see my Savior when he called my name again. I want to hear my Savior when I'm lying in my bed in the midnight hour telling me everything going to be all right. I'm changing your circumstance. I'm giving you faith to move mountain. I'm giving you the word to speak to your storm. Command your storm, get out the way. Because here I come charging through in the name of Jesus. 
You can't hold me back no more. You can't hold me down no more. Sometimes I was down so down so low. I couldn't see myself getting up. But one day the light shined in the midst of the darkness of despair. God heard my despair and cry. He said, rise up, oh man of power. Rise up, you mighty man of faith. I called you my man of God for such a time as this to preach the gospel to the poor and to the afflicted, to those who are bruised, to set the captives free because I put my anointing on your life. And when the anointing comes, guess what happens? The anointing, it caused the body to begin to grow. The anointing caused the body to come together one accord. The anointing released the blessing in the house. The anointing released the power to heal and deliver. The anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the story about a father who went on a long journey. And he had a son who followed him. He said, son, you can't go with me right now. I want you to sit right here on this seat. And I'm coming back in a few days to get you again. Just stay right there on that seat. And the boy said, okay, daddy, I'm going to trust you. And so the father went on a far journey. And in his journey, he ran into some storms. He ran into some problems. He ran into some situations, some discouraging moments. But he kept his word to his child because he said, I'm coming back to get you my child. Remind me of Jesus Christ who went on a far journey. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. He went up to glory. He hung on that cross called Calvary. The Bible said he hung from the sixth and the ninth hour as he was praying for his long journey. He stood on that cross, didn't come down until redemption was done. Then the Bible said they put him in a borrowed tomb. He went in the grave, stayed there three days and three nights. And on the third day, he got up with all power. He came back to get his child. So when the father came back, his child was still sitting there. He said, Daddy, as I sat here, some dogs came against me. As I sat here, people start talking about me. As I sat here, they tried to discourage me. As I sat here, problems start rising in my life. But he said, as I stay right here, I heard your voice saying, I'm coming back to you again. I want to encourage you today, church, that Jesus is coming back again. One of these old days, and he's coming back for a bride without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for his people. Will you be in that number when he calls your name? Will you be ready to meet the king? Will you be ready to see our Savior face to face? And will he look at you eye to eye? Say, Mother Dini, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher. Take your place on the throne right next to me. Seated in glory forever. I want to hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to tell him, Lord, I, I got a bunch of excuses. The reason I didn't live right. It was my family's fault. It was addictions in my life. It was my bad habits. I don't want to tell him all my excuses. But I want to come to him correct. Say, Lord, I messed up. I made a mistake. But I remembered your grace that covered me. Because your word told me that your grace appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust to live with a sober mindset filled with your spirit and I just want to tell you God thank you for saving me 
Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand all over the room? You might be here today. Everyone in this room is family. But you might be here today in a mental dilemma. What I mean by that, you've been tormented by the enemy. Your mind been speaking against you. You've been going through some struggles, having some bad habits. And you're a child of God. I want to let you know today, he loves you. He loves you unconditionally. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. And God is saying at this moment, if you hear and you know that you haven't been living right for the Lord, you know there's some things in your life that God is trying to break off of you, but yet it seems to be hard to let go. Just like the disciples in the storm, Lord, save me. God wants to save you today, restore you. It's okay who you are. He wants to bring you back to the fellowship with himself. Doesn't matter if you back, backslid straight away. This is the moment to make your choice in yourself. I'm not leaving the same way I came in. But I want to leave changed. I want to leave delivered. I want to leave knowing that if I was to die today, I would be with the Lord for eternity. Then to know that I had the opportunity to get things right and I refused. What a dangerous place to be in when you refuse the Lord, when he calls you to salvation. Today, if you hear my voice, don't harden your heart in rebellion and stubbornness and resist me, but come back to me. And God said he'll receive you as if you never even left. So when everyone should will, lift your hands all over the room. In the name of Jesus. Who shot out of our shake here did you say? The end of your shed it out of a cassiti or shut out of my school. Who that of a shed it about Sandria Cassiti and the rich. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up your people today, oh God, as a whole. That you, Lord God, after us hearing your word today, that we're held accountable for the words that went into our ear gates. And that that word that you spoke today, God, will penetrate the core of our hearts to bring a change in our lives. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Loose your hold off of God's people right now. Off of their mindsets. Off of their hearts. In the name of Jesus. I release God a fresh anointing yes, yes, yes. to destroy every apprehensive spirit. Yes. Every person who's reasoning in their mind whether I should or I shouldn't give myself back to you, God. But as you have spoken, God, that you do the drawing, we lift you up, Jesus that you would draw all men into yourself. And ask Father God that you purify our hearts, purify our minds, even our conversation. That everything we do and we say, Father God, will be pleasing in your sight. I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my rebellious ways. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
And I ask you, Lord God, to restore me, to revive me, to refresh me by your spirit. And I thank you that I receive your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise him here today. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As we get ready to go, keep on praying for Minister Joe and his family because they need us right now to intercede for them. Thank you. They need our prayers. So let us uh, dismiss Father in Jesus' name. I thank you, O oh God, that as we leave this place, we never leave your presence. But you dispatch angels, God, around every person that leaves this place, O oh God. Protect them from danger, seen and unseen. From the reckless drivers on the streets, O oh God, to those who out plotting to do harm to other folk. That you put a guard around the bodies, O oh God. And we thank you, until we meet again, that the grace of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest on our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.